Hello, today we're going to work through Vim Tutor, which uh, will introduce us to the Vim editor. Hope you enjoy. In order to access uh, the Vim Tutor, we need to type in the command Vim Tutor to any sort of terminal. Okay, this will work on WSL. It will work on, of course, the local. Uh, um, actually, I should say it, it will work on any system in which you have Vim installed. So you see, I already have it here. Okay, so we're presented with this nice welcome to the Vim Tutor uh, version 1.7. So before we get started, I'm going to make a couple changes. And that is I'm going to set the I'm going to set ruler so that we know where we are inside the file. And I will also set number set. Oh, I can spell correctly set number okay so now we can see what line number we're on in the file very good let's get started vim is a very powerful editor that has many commands too many to do too many to explain in a tutor such as this this tutor is designed to describe enough of the commands that you will be able to easily use vim as an all-purpose editor and then hopefully expand uh, beyond that knowledge later. The approximate time required to complete the tutor is 30 minutes, depending upon how much time is spent with experimentation. Attention! The commands in the, in the lesson will modify the text. Make a copy of this file to practice on. If you started Vim Tutor, this is already a copy. It is important to remember that this tutor is set up to teach by use. That means that you need to execute the commands to learn them properly. If you only read the text, you will forget the commands. Now make sure that your caps lock key is not depressed and press the J key enough times to move the cursor so that lesson 1.1 completely fills the screen. So I invite you to pull up a terminal and follow along. In fact, I'm going to time myself to see if I can finish this tutorial in the amount of time that they say that uh, should be given to it. So let me pull that up here. And there we go, clock is running. So it says we need to first press escape to make sure that we're in normal mode. And we'll press J, uh, so I need to be inside here, there we go. Uh, so we'll press J until lesson 1.1 fills the screen, moving the cursor. Okay, first things first, to move the cursor, press the HJKL keys as indicated. The H key is at the left and moves left. The L key is at the right and moves right. The J key looks like a down arrow. Okay, so those are just some hints. Um, really nothing for the K, but um, easiest way is that you're just going to memorize these. Um, it'll be second nature in no time. So H moves to the left. L moves to the right, J or um, K moves up, and J moves down. Move the cursor around the screen until you're comfortable. So just play around with this as long as you want. And of course, we'll be using these for all of our navigation in this tutorial, so you'll be quite used to it by the time we're done. Hold down the J, the down key J until it repeats. Now you know how to move to the next lesson. Using the down key, move to lesson 1.2. If you are ever unsure about something you typed, press escape to place you in normal mode, then retype the command you wanted. Normal mode is your means of navigation around the file in Vim. So now I'm in normal mode. Uh, let's see, note, the cursor keys should also work, but using HJKL, you will be able to move around much faster once you get used to it, really. Okay. The reason why they say that is that if I give any sort of commands here, as you see on my keyboard, uh, as they light up, that's my, my, my fingers are currently in what's called the home position. Uh, if I have to move my fingers down to the cursor, well, now I'm wasting time moving up here and then moving down here. You see, it's not efficient to move with the cursor keys. Okay. Lesson 1.2, Exiting Vim. Note, before executing any of the steps below, read this entire lesson. Okay, press the escape key to make sure that you are in normal mode. Just did. Type colon Q bang or colon Q exclamation mark. This exits the editor, discarding any changes you have made. 
get uh, uh, and then that will take you out of Vim. It closes Vim. You get back here by executing the commands that got you into this tutor. That might be Vim Tutor. If you have these steps memorized and are confident, execute steps one through three to exit and re-enter the editor. Note, colon Q bang, uh, enter, discards any changes you make. In a few lessons, you will learn how to save the changes to a file. Okay, so escape, colon, Q, bang, closed it out. So I'm going to use the up arrow to get me to the previous command given in the terminal, which is Vim Tutor, and it's starting it up. Very good. So I'm going to go ahead and give a couple commands here. Uh, we had set ruler and set number. Okay. So now using J, I'm moving down, exiting text. There we go. Text editing, deletion, 1.3. Press X to delete the character under the cursor. So we need to move a step one, move the cursor to the line below marked with the arrow. Step two, to fix the errors, move the cursor until it is on top of the character to be deleted. Uh, step three, press the X key to delete the unwanted character. Step four, repeat steps two through four until the sentence is correct. Okay, here we go. The cow jumped. Now that's clear. All right, so x jumped get rid of a v get rid of an r h and an o the cow jumped over the moon that's right he really did step five now that the line is correct to go on to lesson 1.4 note as you go through this at two as you go through this tutor do not try to memorize learn by usage okay lesson 1.4 text editing insertion Okay, so it says here we need to press I to insert text. Uh, move the cursor to the first line marked below with an arrow. Two, to make the first line the same as the second, move the cursor on top of the character before which the text is to be inser inserted. Three, press I and type the necessary additions. Step four, as each error is fixed, press escape to return to normal mode. Repeat steps two through four to correct the sentence. Okay, so first escape, and then we navigate to where we need to be. There is, so we need to add the word some, I, some text, escape, missing, I. There is some text missing, I, from this line. There is some text missing from this line, so remember, cursor in front of the position where you want to start inserting text. I, you're in, you're in insert mode now. Type away, escape to get back to normal mode. When you are comfortable inserting text, move to lesson 1.5. 1 1.5. Less, uh, appending. Press uh, shift A or capital A to append text. Move the cursor to the first line marked with the arrow. It does not matter on what character the cursor is in that line. So this is not like I where it has to be just before. This can be at any position within the line. It will automatically jump to the end and append text. Step two, as the text has been appended, press escape to return to normal uh, to normal mode. Oh, I, step two, press shift A or capital A and type in the necessary additions. Step three, as the text has been appended, press escape to return to normal mode. Step four, move the cursor to the second line marked with the arrow and repeat steps two and three to correct this sentence. Okay, so there's my cursor right there. There is some text missing from, so shift A, I'm now, I'm at the end of the line and I'm in insert mode. This line. Oh, there we go, period, escape, now I'm out. Uh, let's see, moving down to this guy right here, there is also some text miss, so I need shift A, now I'm in insert mode again, and I'm appending text, missing, Whoop. here. There is also some text missing here, and so that's appending to the end of the line. When you're comfortable appending text, move to lesson 1.6. Nope, not up, we wanna go down. Down this rabbit hole. Lesson 1.6, editing a file. Use colon WQ to save a file and exit. 
Note, before executing any of the commands below, read this entire lesson. 1. If you have access to another terminal, do the following there. Otherwise, exit this terminal as you did in lesson 1.2, colon, Q, bang. I do have another terminal window pulled up, so I'll just be using that. At the shell prompt, type this command, vim file text enter. Vim is the command to start the vim editor. File.txt is the name of the file you wish to edit. Use the name of a file that you can change. 3. Insert and delete text as you learned in the previous lessons. 4. Save the file with changes and exit vim with colon wq enter. If you have quit vim tutor in step 2 in step 1, restart the vim tutor and move down to the following summary. After reading the above steps and understanding them, do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull up our other tab here. And I'm first going to type ls to see what we have. Oh, ls. Very good. Where is there? Okay, code and scripts. Uh, that means that we can go ahead and create a new file here. Vim new file.txt. All right. Now we've opened the Vim editor. Yours might look a little different. I've got some changes here. Oh, we'll talk about setting up your uh, .vimrc file a little later. Um, but for right now, I need to go ahead and get into insert mode. There we go. And I need to start typing some text. This is some text that my overseer wants me to write. I would say robot master, but he's touchy about that. The, okay, this is some text that my overseer wants me to write. Okay, go ahead and delete that. So uh, I can't delete yet. Uh, I, 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 let's say I don't know that command, um, but what I can do, I could just go right, put my cursor right in front of the word that I want to get rid of, and I can get rid of that. This is some text that my, uh, let's I'm going to insert mode that my tutor wants me to write. There, that's a little bit more appropriate. This is some text that my tutor wants me to write. Okay. So now let's see here. Uh, what other command do we know? We know the append command, right? So shift A. Now I'm appending. I'm going to get rid of that, uh, uh, get rid of that uh, punctuation mark, the period. This is some text that my tutor wants me to write neatly and with great gusto. There you go. This is some text that my tutor wants me to write neatly and with great gusto. Okay, let's get out of this, shall we? All right, so colon WQ, write and quit. Okay, and I can see ls, I just created a new file, newfile.txt. That was the right command. I can cat the contents, so new file, tab completion. This is some text that my tutor wants me to write, neatly and with great gusto. All right, so that's how we open a file with Vim and start editing. Let's go back to our tutorial. And we were on uh, lesson one summary. Woohoo! Already done with the first lesson. The cursor is moved using either the arrow keys or the H, J, K, L keys. Uh, so H for left, J, J down, K up, L right. To start Vim from the shell prompt, type Vim file name enter. Three. To exit Vim, type escape colon Q bang. I don't know why it's called bang, but it's just called bang. Uh, to trash all changes. Or type escape colon wq enter to save the changes four to delete the character at the cursor type x five to insert or append text type i uh type inserted text to insert before the uh the cursor a type appended text and then escape uh, and now escape always takes you back to normal mode will append after the line note pressing escape as it says here, we'll return you in normal mode or we'll cancel an unwanted and partially completed command. So if you're ever in doubt of, are you entering the right command? Is this a problem? Just hit escape and it will take you right back to normal mode. Now continue with lesson two. There. Lesson 2.1, deletion commands. Type DW to delete a word. 
plus E press escape to make sure that you're in normal mode. That's kind of a given now, isn't it? Move the cursor to the line below marked with the arrow, three. Move the cursor to the beginning of the line that needs to be deleted. Type DW to make the word disappear. Note, the letter D will appear on the last line of the screen as you type it. Vim is waiting for you, so it'll, it'll appear here. In fact, if I type it, there you see, it appeared. Uh, let's see here. Vim is waiting for you to type W. If you see another character than D, you typed something wrong. Press escape and start over. So escape. So now the D command is gone. We're back in normal mode. All right. So I'm going to make sure that my cursor is where it needs to be. There are some, so this should read, there are some words that don't belong in this sentence. So let's get rid of all the words that don't belong in the sentence. There are, so my cursor over here, delete word. There are some words and our next one, get rid of the word fun. No one wants fun around here. There are some words that don't belong. Oh, and see, See how I had I had pressed G. G is a command. We'll learn a little bit later in in um, Vim. And so any command that I were to type afterwards might be a problem. So if you ever see a command down there at the lower and uh, the lower right hand corner, just press Escape and it will clear it will clear that command from the Vim editor. Okay. So let's see here. There are some words that don't belong. I need to get rid of paper. So D W in this sentence. There are some words that don't belong in this sentence. Perfect. Repeat steps three and four until the sentence is correct and move on to lesson 1.2. Well, I'm going to have to pick up the pace. Only 15 minutes left. Uh, let's see here. Uh, more deletion commands. Uh, type D uh, D dollar sign to delete to the end of the line. Press escape to make sure that you're in normal mode. Move the cursor to the line below. Uh, three, move the cursor to the end of the correct line after the first and type DW to delete to the end of the line. Somebody typed the end of this line twice. So I just simply move my cursor to the beginning of the portion that I want to get rid of. I type D and dollar sign, gone. Somebody typed the end of this line twice. Excellent. Move on to lesson 2.3 to understand what is happening. So here we're getting into operators and motions. Many commands that change text are made from an operator and a motion. The format for a delete command with the delete operator is as follows. D motion. So delete followed by a motion. Where D is the delete operator, motion is what the operator will operate on. Listed below. A short list of motions. There are a lot of others. Uh, w until the start of the next word, excluding its first character. Uh, so if your cursor is at a particular position and then you press DW, it will exclude its first character. E to the end of the current word, including the last character. Dollar sign. The uh, to the end of the line, including the last character. Thus, typing DE will delete from the cursor to the end of the word. Note, pressing just the motion while in normal mode without an operator will move the cursor as specified. Ah, so now we can start to move around a little bit uh, easy, uh, more uh, quickly, shall we say, because we don't have to always press our L key, right? Our L key or our H key and hold it down and hope that you can get through. We can now press, so let me get up here so we can see we're on line, let's see where it says W. Well, W is a motion key. I am now moving word by word by word. Very nice. I can also move E, and E takes me to the end. It also traverses the, the lines, and it always goes to the last character of a word. Um, if I press just, let's see here, if I go somewhere in here, and I press my dollar sign, it took me to the end of the line. Very cool. Thus, typing DE, and you see, so now, now we know some new motions, not just, not just operators, we know motions. Lesson 2.4, using a count for a motion. Typing a number before a motion repeats it that many times. Move the cursor to the start of the line marked with the arrow. 2, type 2W to move the cursor two words forward. Type 3E to move the cursor to the end of the third word forward and then type zero to move to the start of the line. Repeat steps two and three with different numbers. Okay, well, we'll just do the steps two and three. Okay, so I'm gonna go 
I don't know if they teach this yet, but we can go back by word. Go back by word. So by pressing B, you saw that I was pressing B to get through. So if I go word, 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 and B, 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 or zero takes me to the beginning of the line. This is just a line with words that you can move around in. So they said that I can enter a number followed by a motion. So I want to move three words in. Three, W. Zero, one, two, three. You see that first, uh, the arrow was counted as a word. So now I moved in to the beginning of the line. This is just a line with words you can move around in. Now I can do back the same way. So two, B. Now I'm at the beginning of the line. I moved back two words. Oh, let's see here. I wanted to go four, E. Moved in. Okay. I can then, once again, move to the end of the line. Zero takes me back. Now we're going to move on to lesson 2.5 using a count to delete more. Typing a number with an operator repeats it that many times. In, in the, the combination of the delete operator and a motion mentioned above, you insert a count before the motion to delete more. So you would be operator, number, motion. Move the cursor to the first uppercase word in the line marked with the arrow. Type D2W to delete the two uppercase words. Repeat steps one and two with a different count to delete the consecutive uppercase words with one, excuse me, with one word. Okay. So uh, let's see here. Word, word. Okay. And I want to delete those two words. So I do D, two, W. Delete two words. This line. And I'm going to move forward by words again. And here are one, two, three, four. So D, four, W, got rid of those. This line of words is, so let's see here. I can also traverse, so I want, let's see what happens if I go three W, move me to where I need to be. So I want to delete three of these. So I go operator, number, motion. Perfect. This, this line of words is cleaned up and so are we. Let's move on to our next lesson. Lesson 2.6, operating on lines. Type DD to delete a whole line. So this is operator, operator, DD. Due to the frequency of whole line deletion, the designers of VI, or VIM, uh, as we'll see, VIM grew out of VI, uh, decided it would be easier to simply type two Ds to delete a line. Step one, move the cursor to the second line in the phrase below. Two, type DD to delete the line. Three, now move to the fourth line. Four, Type 2DD to delete two lines. So it says we need to move to the second line. And it, we can be anywhere in the line. It doesn't matter. And I'll just press DD. One line less. Roses are red. Violets are blue. I have a car. Clocks tell time. Match that could be. All right. So here we need to type once again. We have our number first. 2DD. There we go. So number followed by the operator here will will remove that many lines. It will it will act the dd command, the delete line command on two lines. Okay. Doubling uh, to operate on a line also works for operators mentioned below. So we're going to learn about a few more. So remember, numbers followed by the operators will will perform that operation on that many lines. Lesson 2.7, the undo commands. Press U to undo the last commands. U, capital U, to fix the whole line. Move the cursor to the line below marked with the arrow and place it on the first error. Type X to delete the first unwanted character. Now type U to undo the last command executed. This time fix all the errors on the line using the X command. Now type a capital U to return the line to its original state. Now type U a few times to undo the U and preceding commands. Now type Control R, keep uh, keeping Control key pressed while hitting R a few times to redo the commands, undoing the undos. Okay, so move the cursor to the line and place it on the first error. Okay, and we press X. Okay, now type U. See, in fact, we see this little note here down at the bottom. One change before three seconds ago. Okay. Um, let's see here. What else do I want to do? Fix all the errors. This time, fix all the errors on the line using the X command. Okay. So, there we go. X and X, X, X. Uh, oh, I, I did one incorrectly. There we go. 
X, place them, well, undo. See, I'm already using undo, X with undo. Fix the errors on this line and replace them with undo. Now, I'm going to type a capital U to return the line to its original state. Oh. Well, how about that? It only maintained the first, first line. I wonder why. Hmm. It must be because I opened up a new line below. Well, let's see here. Control R, already at the newest change. Well, that's interesting. Let's see if I, if I make some changes here, if I just go somewhere in the line and I start to add stuff. So I add an I and I add an S, S L L, and then escape. There we go. So you see it fixed the line. It returned the line to the previous state. And if I do control R already at the newest change a few times to redo the commands it undoes the it undo the undos in this case these are very useful commands now move on to the lesson two summary and it looks like boy we have only six minutes left we've only gotten two lessons in Whew. and you see here we're only 35 percent of the way through oh boy we got a lot of work to do all right lesson two summary one to delete from the cursor up to the next line type dw two to delete from the cursor up to the end of the word type DE. Three, to delete from the cursor to the end of a line type D followed by the dollar sign. To delete a whole line type DD. Five, to repeat a motion, prepend it with a following number. Okay, so let's see here. In fact, we'll actually show this. To delete a line from the cursor up to the next word type DW. So DW got rid of it. Escape undo to delete a line from the cursor to the end of the word type d e so if i'm here and i type d e it got rid of the end of the word once again undo three to delete from the cursor to the end of the line type d dollar sign so d dollar sign undo to delete a whole line type dd dd undo to repeat a motion, prepend it with the follow uh, with a number 2w. So, for instance, if I want to travel through, I would type 5w. Move me five words in. 6. The format for a change command is operator number motion. So, like for instance, if I want to delete three words, got rid of three words, undo. Where operator is what to do. Uh, number is the optional count to repeat the motion. Motion moves over the text to operate on, such as word, e, uh, end of line, etc. Seven, to move to the start of the line, use zero. Very nice. Eight, to undo previous actions, type undo, or type u, lowercase u. To undo all the changes on a line, type capital U. To undo the undos, type control R. Very good. Lesson 3.1. The, uh, the put command, type P to put previously deleted text after the cursor. Move the cursor to the first line before marked with the arrow. Two, type DD to delete the line and store it in a Vim register. Move the cursor to the C line above where the deleted line should go. Four, type P to put the line below the cursor. Five, repeat steps two through four to put all the lines in the correct order. All right, so let's see here. Uh, a should be first, so we'll go DD and move up to here, P for put. And then B needs to be up, so we'll put there. There we go. A, oh, B, put. A, B, and then notice I want to put it below D, uh, I want to put it after B, so I go at the beginning of the of line 384, P for put. And now A, B, C, D. Roses are red, violets are blue, intelligence is learned. Can you learn too? Funny rhyme, but all right, if that's what they want. Lesson 3.2, the replace command. Type RX to replace the character at the cursor with X. One, move the cursor to the first line marked with the arrow. Two, move the cursor so that it is on top of the first error. Three, type R and then the character which should be there. Four, repeat steps two and three until the first line is equal to the second line. So replace the character at the cursor with X. Uh, when this line was twoed in, someone pressed some wrong keys. Cute. So we need to get rid of that. So I'm going to uh, move my cursor to where I want to replace that. 
So I want to replace the A with an E. So R, E. Move to my next one. I'm sure I should be using Word. Um, here we go. Next line. So R, in. When this line was, and let's see, I need to go to the second word. So I'm going to go to 2W, was typed, and let's see, R, E. Oh, undo. Uh, let's see here was typed, so I'm going to go R, P, and moving forward, word by word, good, and moving in, we need to get rid of the W, so R, E. Someone pressed some wrong, 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 wrong keys. It's been a goblin who wrote that word, so R, N. When this line was typed in, someone pressed some wrong keys. Now they look perfect. All right, move, uh, now move to lesson 3.3. Remember that you should be learning by doing, not by memorization. Excellent words. Thank you, Sensei. Thank you, thank you. All right, moving on to lesson 3.3, the change operator. To change until the end of a line, type CE. CE. Move the cursor to the first line marked below. So change until the end of a word, type change, and then E. Place the cursor on the U in lube. Type CE and the correct word, in this case, type INE. Press escape and move to the next character that needs to be changed. Repeat steps three and four until the first sentence is the same as the last. Okay, so this, uh, let's, let's go back by words. In fact, let's go to zero and then we'll go word. This lube, okay. So what do they want? Place the cursor on the U in lube. Okay, and C, E. This, oh, let's see here. C, E, there we go. This line, escape, word, has, oh, I need has. Has a few, we need words. So let's see here. Let's move forward by words. How many words is that? Well, let's practice some of our commands. There we go. Uh, three W and let's go to C E. Yeah. All right. Well, that looks like time up. Well, just stop that. There we go. Well, should we see how much longer this takes? I say we go on a little bit more, okay? So let's go stopwatch. Let's see how much longer it takes us to finish this, all right? So here's our stopwatch, okay? So remember, 30 minutes has already elapsed, so we're simply going to add what it takes to finish this tutorial to our previous. That'll be our total time. Thanks for sticking in there. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, type CE and the correct word, in this case, I and E. We've already done that, so let's just continue with this command. Let me make sure I'm clicked in here. Good. This line has a few words that uh, need changing, so let's see here. Word, word. There we go. And let's go ahead and change word. CW allows us to change the word. Need changing. Escape word, word to move through using the change operator. Okay, so CE using the change operator. This line has a few words that need changing using the change operator. Perfect, we have finished this. Notice that CE deletes the word and places you in insert mode. CC does the same for the whole line, okay? So this is the same as DD, where DD deletes the entire line. CC allows you to change the entire line. So it deletes the line and immediately puts you in insertion mode so you can begin typing a new line. Okay, 3.4. More changes using C. The change operator is used with the same motions as delete. Notice notice a pattern here. Operator, motion. Operator, motion. Okay, that's very key. Operator, numerator, or numerical value, motion. The change operator works and it's the same as follows. Okay, uh, let's see here too. The motions are the same, such as word. We've already used that previously. And the dollar sign for the end of a line. Move the cursor to the first line marks below with the arrow. Four, move the cursor to the first error. Type C dollar sign and type the rest of the line like the second. Press escape. The end of this line needs some help to make it look like the second. 
uh, the end of this line needs to be corrected using the C dollar command. So let's move back using our back command. Notice that's a motion operator. The end of this line needs, so we go to here and we're going to type C dollar sign, deletes the entire line, puts us in insertion mode. All right, some help to make it like the second. Oh, and it looks like I added an extra one. So let's see how many words back is that? Let's try this command here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like eight. So what happens if I do eight? So eight B. Ah, perfect. And let's go to E. Actually. Yeah, E. And then change E. Nope, that did not work. Well, I'll just do it the hard way. I need some oh okay let's try r r e perfect so remember we've used repl uh, replace now oh, perfect let's keep on going the end of this line needs some uh needs some oh we forgot we need the word help what happened there needs some help to make it like the second shoo all right uh let's see note the end of this line needs some help to make it look like the second. I think I was supposed to do that with reverse, but you get the idea. Note, you can use the backspace, uh, the backspace key to correct mistakes while typing. Okay, lesson three summary. Excellent, half of the way there, 45%. One, to put back text that has, been, that has just been deleted, type P for put. This puts the deleted text after the cursor. If a line was deleted, it will go on the line below the cursor. Two, to replace the character under the cursor, type R, and then the character you want to have there. Uh, three, the change operator allows you to change from the cursor to where the motion takes you, e.g. take CE to change from the cursor to the end of the word, C uh, dollar sign to change to the end of the line. Four, the format for change is C number motion. Okay, so, so far, once again, operator number motion operator number motion. Now go on to the next lesson. Lesson 4.1, cursor location and file status. Type control G to show your location in the file and the file status. Type G to move to a line in the file. Note, read this entire lesson before executing any of the steps. One, hold down the control key and press G. We call this control G. A message will appear at the bottom of the screen with the file name and the position in the file. Remember the line number for step three. Note, you can see the cursor position in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. This happens when the ruler option is set. See, help ruler. As you see, that's why I had us set ruler at the beginning so that we would know our position within the file. As you see, currently we're at line number 510 and we're 50 way, we're 50 percent way through the lesson. Yay. Okay. Uh, to uh, type, press control G to move, or uh, sorry, capital G to move you to the bottom of the file. Type GG to move you to the start of the file. Type the number of the line you are on and then G. This will return you to the line you were on when you first pressed control G. If you feel confident to do this, type execute steps one through three. Okay, so the first thing to do is as you see, I set numbers already, so we know our current position. We know that we're on line 490. It also says it down there in the ruler. But if I press Control G, see here, there are 969 lines modified, and we're 50% of the way through. Hit Escape. All right, so let's see here. Uh, what's our first command? We need to press uh, capital G to move to the bottom of the file. All right, very nice. Modified for Vim by Bram Molinar. I hope I said that name correctly. Okay, now if I want to move to the beginning of a line, or I should say the beginning of the file, GG for good game. No, just kidding. It's the beginning of a file, GG. Okay, and if I want to go back to my previous position, then I need to type in the line number in the file followed by G. So if I go 490 G. Uh, is it Shift G? 490. Nope. Hmm. All right, the command I know. Let's so escape. Let's go 490 GG. 
Okay, so if you do the number followed by GG, it will jump you to that line. I'm not sure exactly what does I say. Type the number of the line you were on and then capital G. This will return you to the line you were on when you pressed control G. So let's try that again. So if I go control G, shows me my current position, GG, 490, G. Okay, so that works as well. So you can either do line number GG and it will take you back to that number or you can do line number capital G will take you to it will take you to the position that you were at when you pressed control G. If you feel confident to do this, execute steps one through three. We've already done that. Let's move on. Lesson 4.2, the search command. Uh, always important, always good to know how to search things. Search things out. Type the forward slash followed by a phrase to search for the phrase in normal mode. We're already in normal mode. Uh, let's see, type the forward slash. That's down there by your shift uh, next to your, punk, uh, your period or your um, end of sentence. Notice that it and the cursor appear at the bottom of the screen as with the colon command. Now type error, double R, or three R's. This is the word that you want to search for, okay? E-R-R, -R, there are three R's, O-O-R. This is the word you want to search for. Oh. There we go. Aha. To search for the same phrase again, simply type in. So if I do that, to search for the same phrase in the opposite direction, type capital N. To search for a phrase in the backwards direction, use the question mark instead of the forward slash. To search for a phrase in the backwards direction. Okay, so that's where you would start from a current position and move back in the file. Okay. Uh, to go back to where you uh, came from, press Control O. Uh, repeat to go back further. Control I moves forward. Okay. So let's see here. Error. N. N. Reach the bottom. So if I do Control N. N. Yep. So we're moving back. Very nice. Uh, what else do we need? Uh, to go back to where you came from, press Control O. That's interesting. So it's taking me back to the various positions that I had been. And then control I. Control I. So it's taking me back to previous positions. All right. So there we go. Error is not the way to spell error. Error is an error. Note, when the search reaches the end of the file, it will continue at the start unless the wrap scan option has been reset. Okay. Very good. Moving on. Lesson 4.3, matching parentheses search. This is very, this is a really important one. So we type the, uh, we type the, uh, can't speak right now. We type the, what symbol is that? Not oh, parentheses. Oh, why can't I think right now? Percent. <laughs> type percent to find the matching ending brace. Okay. So we place the cursor on any of the following uh, any of the following braces in the line marked below with the arrow. Now type the percent sign. The cursor will move to the matching parentheses or bracket. Um, very good. Type to move uh, type percent to move the cursor to the other matching bracket. So it's always going to be bouncing back and forth between the two brackets. Move the cursor to another bracket and see what the percent sign does. This is a test line with lots of brackets. Okay, so if I go to this guy here and I percent sign, took me to the last one. Um, if I press percent again, takes me to the beginning. I move forward to this guy right here. I don't know why I call it guy, but okay. This character, this character is a test line. And if I press the percent sign, it took me to my next bra uh, brace or parenthesis. They're all brackets. They're all containing brackets in some way. All right, so then I press my percent sign again. It takes me to my previous bracket. I move forward, and now I have my square bracket. Move forward. Let's take a look at that. It moves back and forth. Very nice. And then I move forward by word and percent sign. Very nice. Note, this is very useful in debugging a program with unmatched parentheses. Yes, indeed it is. It is very nice. All right, uh, lesson 4.4, the substitute command. Type 
Uh, let's see here. Da -da -da -da. The substitute command. So we type the uh, colon s old new followed by g to substitute new from old. Move the cursor to the line below marked uh, the c2. Type s v the forward slash v forward slash the followed by enter. Note that this command only changes the first occurrence of the in the line. Now type colon s forward slash the forward slash the forward slash g for global. Adding the g flag means to substitute globally in the line. Change all occurrences of the in the line. The best time to see the flowers is in the spring. Okay, so our cursor is here. Let's just move to the beginning of the line. Once again, colon s forward slash the one where the word we're looking for, the word that we want to change, and of course it only changes it on this line. And then if I just press enter, it got rid of the first occurrence. I should say it converted the first occurrence of the to the. If I want to redo the command, now a nice little uh, um, trick here. If I use my up arrow it will take me to the previous command that I entered. All I have to do is modify the end of that command by adding a G. And now it has changed all occurrences of the to the in this line. Very nice. Four, to change every occurrence of a, of a character string between two lines, type, uh, let's see, every occurrence of a character string between two lines, press number, numbers, old, new, G, where where the hashtags uh, are the line numbers of the range of lines where the substitution is to be done. So from lines so-and-so to so-and-so. So let's say from lines 23 to 67, right? In fact, if I were to enter that here and I were to do from 23 to, what's the uh, nomenclature? Okay, from 23 to 67, I want to run the substitute command with this. If I add the word the, I don't know if the occurs, but we'll see what happens. Followed by the, followed by global. Okay, it will it will substitute every occurrence of the for the within the range tw uh, uh, 23 to 67. And if I go ahead and enter that command, pattern not found. So you see, if it finds a pattern, it will change it. If it doesn't, it just lists that command. All right, and then it says fall uh, type percent sign s forward slash old uh, old pattern new pattern global to change every occurrence in the whole file. Then we type uh, yes, and then if you want to change that so that it will prompt you every time. That way, if you have a particular case that you want to maintain the old method or the old pattern, then you simply add a C to the end, and that will prompt you and say, hey, are you sure you want to change this? And you can say yes, no, yes, no, and it, um, detail that substitution a little bit better or fine tune that, that substitution. Very good. So let's go ahead and move to our next. So we're at the end of lesson four and 15 minutes. Okay. Lesson four summary one control G to uh, displays your location in the file and the file status. Once again, control G shows we're at 60%. We went 10% of this lesson or of this file. Yay. Um, let's see here. Uh, G moves to the end of the file. So once again, let's control G and uh, we're at line 578. So let's remember that. So if I move here, okay, and I want to go back. So I go 578 G. Now we move back. Uh, uh, number G moves to that line number. GG moves to the first line. So GG. And also, as I said, if you do 570 GG, takes you to line 570. Oh, I did 579. Okay. All right, so let's see here. So that was the first one was moving around in the file line by line. Very handy. Oh, it's so nice to be able to just jump, 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 jump all over the place instead of always pressing down J and K and moving at the snail's pace. That's not fun. G is fun. Okay. 
Number two, type the forward slash followed by a phrase, searches forward for that phrase. Typing, uh, typing question mark followed by a phrase, searches backward for that phrase. So in fact, uh, let's see, let's remember where we are, 584. And let's just try that quickly. If I type percent um, uh, question mark and I want to search for the word blue, I believe it occurred a few times and took us back to blue. And I press, I can press in again and it's taking me backwards. So you see 2.6, 3.1, 2.6, 3.1. Those are the only two occurrences of blue. So let's see, I wanna go back to 579, GG. Took me back to line 579. Let's see here. Uh, after a search, type N to find the next occurrence in the same direction, or, ca or capital N to search in the opposite direction. Uh, control O takes you back to older positions. Control I to newer positions. Three, typing percent sign uh, while the cursor is on a bracket goes to its match. Goes uh, So if it's the left-hand bracket, it will take you to the right-hand bracket. Um, four, to substitute new for the, first uh, to, for the first old. So to substitute old pattern for new pattern in a line, type colon S forward slash old pattern followed by new pattern. Uh, to substitute new for all olds on a line, type s forward slash old forward slash n forward slash g. Uh, to substitute a phrase between two lines, uh, be, uh, so within a range, beginning of range, end of range, old pattern, new pattern, global, or g. To substitute all occurrences in the file type, uh, in the file, type percent sign, substitution, old pattern, new pattern global to ask for confirmation each time you simply add a c very good lesson 5.1 how to execute an external command oh I, I love this one this is so nice especially like if you're if you are writing code in c plus plus and you want to run a, a compilation on a particular file oh, i love this one because you can simply compile within the file run it see how it's working very nice so type colon bang followed by an external command to execute that command type the familiar command uh, colon by the way just a fun side note the colon takes you into the x editor which is the way you used to write text before you had a full page text editor like uh well, what would later become vim but some of its early predecessors okay so uh, anyway just a fun factoid all right this, this allows you to enter a command line editor. And now type the bang. Uh, they, they say exclamation point. It's also known as bang character. This allows you to execute any external shell command. Three, as an example, type ls following the bang and then hit enter. This will show you a listing of your directory just as if you were at the shell prompt. Or uh, use bang dir if ls doesn't work. I know that ls works. So colon bang ls. There we go. You see code and the this is my listing right here. Code new file.txt scripts. Press enter or type command to continue. Okay. And once again, I can uh, let's try something a little bit different. So let's do ls. And then I can chain these commands together, right? Uh, just as if I were in a command. So if I want to look at the date, and then if I want to look at, let's see if calendar works. I don't know if it does. Let's see if I have something called calendar. So this will run the ls command, it will run the date command, and it will run the calendar command, okay? There you go. Look at that. So it says, uh, so here was the ls command, right? Then this is the date command, and then this is the calendar. So this is the calendar utility. Very nice. Oh, look at that, December 28th. Spain recognizes independence of Mexico. Freedom! Freedom. Cool. All right. Let's see what else we've got here. Um, now type, this allows you to execute any external shell command. As an example, type ls, so we already did that one. It is possible to execute any external command in this way, also with arguments. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this. All 
colon commands must be finished by pressing enter. From here on, we will not always mention it, okay? So any commands, you simply have to press enter. To save the changes uh, made to the text, type press uh, W file name. So you see I've been doing that. So if I want to save this particular version of Vim to another version, uh, let's see, I would do new Vim Tutor. New Vim Tutor. Choose a file name that does not exist yet, such as test. Now type wtest. I'm going to do new Vim Tutor, where test is the file name you chose. This saves the whole file, the Vim Tutor, under the name test. To verify this, type uh, colon bang dir or colon bang ls again to see your directory. So w new tutor. Very nice. So once again, I can actually go back in my old commands and you see that I created the file right there, new tutor. Excellent. Okay. Now type uh, colon w test. All right, so we already did that. Note if you were to exit Vim and start it again with Vim test, the file would be an exact copy of the tutor where you saved it. Now remove the file by typing windows. Oh, that's on Windows, uh, so uh, colon bang delete test or on Unix, colon bang rm test. So down here at the bottom, colon, or uh, so colon bang rm new, and then I can do a little trick here, and that is to use auto completion. Tap, oh, I don't want to get rid of new file.txt, I want to get rid of new vim. There we go, new vim tutor. I then press enter, and it is gone. In fact, I can then take a look at my other version here and I type ls and you see that I have indeed gotten rid of new Vim Tutor. Excellent. So let's see here. Lesson 5.3, selecting text to write to save another part of the file type V, uh, type V motion. Type V to save part of the file. Type V motion. Hmm. Move the cursor to this line. Press V and move the cursor to the fifth line below. Press V and move the cursor to this line. Okay, so I'm pressing Z, zero. Now I'm on line one and move the cursor to the fifth line below. Notice that the text is highlighted. So ah, we're going into visual mode. Press the character. Ooh, that's that's difficult to read. Uh, press the the colon character at the bottom of the screen. Uh, the arrows will appear. Oh, I'm sorry. That is that's difficult to read. Uh, what else does it say? Type w test where test is a file name that does not exist yet. Verify that you can see the angle uh, the uh, angle bracket angle bracket w test where you press enter. So. I need to get, let's see what it says here. All right, notice that the text is highlighted. Press the colon character at the bottom of the screen. The arrow operators, the uh, angle angle brackets will appear. Type W test, where test is a file name that does not exist yet. Okay. All right. So we got that, and then Okay, there we go. And then we follow that by write. New file. New file is written. Vim will write the selected lines to the file test. Uh, they say we're going to use ls, but actually, let's go ahead and see what that is. Let's, so let's cat the command. We can use cat. Cat new file. And you see that indeed the lines one through four were stored in a new file. Excellent. Uh, what else do we need? 
uh, Vim will write the selected lines to the file test, uh, use dir or ls to see it. So we indeed proved that it's already there. Um, note, pressing V starts visual selection. You can move the cursor around to make the selection bigger or smaller. Then you can use an operator to do something with the text. For example, D deletes the text, okay? Uh, yeah, in fact, we'll show that here. Uh, if I go visual, and then if I I can actually use my go my uh, G, my uh, G command. So if I go 659 G, oh, that doesn't work. Visual 659. Oh, I don't know what that did. Well, that's interesting. Well, let's go back to 659. 659. GG. And what does this say here? Uh, pressing V starts visual selection. You can move the cursor around to make the selection bigger or smaller. Then you can use an operator to do something with the text. For example, D deletes the text. Okay, don't worry about that. Lesson 5.4, retrieving and merging files. To insert the contents of a file, type R file name, colon R file name. To insert the contents of a file, type R file name. Place the cursor just above this line. Just above this line. After executing step two, you will see steps. Uh, you will see text from lesson 5.3. Then move down to see this lesson again. So once again, colon R, and it was new file, I believe. Yes. Good. So that's how you're able to insert the contents. Well, I'm going to go ahead and hit undo. Okay. Uh, now retrieve your test file using the command colon r test where test is the name of the file you used. The file you retrieve is placed below the cursor line. To verify that a file was retrieved, cursor back and notice that there are now two copies of lesson 5.3, the original and the file version. Note, you can also read the output of an external command. For example, uh, colon r bang ls reads the output of the ls command and puts it below the cursor. So for instance, I can do on line uh, 688, let's say I wanted to insert the contents of calendar. So I would run the r command bang and then calendar. There we go. And now that see it's added 25 more lines to my file lines 689 through what is it 689 through 713 and once again undo it's gone all right good so we are on lesson five summary one the uh, colon bang command executes an external command to uh, w file name writes the current vim file to disk with the name file uh, vmotion, which visual, uh, colon w file name saves the visually selected lines in file file name, colon r file name retrieves disk file file name and puts it below the cursor position, um, colon r um, reads the output of the command and puts it below in the cursor position. As you saw, we did that with we did that with um, uh, calendar. You could do that with cat. You could do that with grep doesn't matter if you need the contents you simply run the colon r bang and then the utility command in unix all right very good moving on lesson 6.1 73 percent of the way there woohoo type o to open a line above the cursor and place you in insert mode move the cursor to the first line below marked with the arrow a type with the lowercase o to open up a line below the cursor and place you in insert mode Okay, very nice. This is some text escape. Line four, to open up a line above the cursor, simply type a capital O. This is actually, this is very handy. So this is some text above the line. This is some text above the line. Very nice. So that was 6.1 using O to open to um, add a new line and put you in insert mode below a current line. Capital O moves your cursor above a line, adds a new line, puts you in insert mode. Lesson 6.2, the append command. Type A 
to insert text after the cursor. So this is just like uh, capital A, except this, instead of taking you to the end of the line, this simply takes you to the end of the word, or actually it, it, it starts adding text after your cursor. So for instance, as you see, I'm inside the word start, A, now I'm at the end of the word start. At the end of the word undo um, if I go back to cursor so if I use my back command and I type a notice it just put me at the u command so this is the cage it will see I can now insert text undo move the cursor to the start of the first line uh, let's see press e until the cursor is at the end of li type an, an a to append text after the cursor modify so let's see here if i go here a good will allow you to practice uh let's see let's go back e um da, 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 a good appending so let's see here word e a notice that so d w e a uh let's see uh to practice oh i must have entered multiple commands undo um there we go appending text to a line this a line will allow you to practice appending text to a line very good so we do it a i and uh, a i and capital a all go to the same insert mode the only difference is where the characters are inserted okay 6.3 another way to replace type a capital r to replace more than one line this allows you to overwrite entire lines okay move the cursor to the first line marked with the arrow move the cursor to the beginning of the first xxx now place r and type the line below in the second line so that it replaces the three x's okay so if i go back and then capital r and i want 456 456 gives you so word 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 there we go capital r five seven nine very nice replacing mode is like insert mode but every typed character deletes an existing line so uh like for instance i could completely overwrite this this line right here by simply going into replace mode and by pressing space i've completely overwritten that line undo Lesson 6.4, copy and paste text. Use the Y operator to copy text and P to paste it. Well, we've already covered P before, so this is using Y and P, yank and put. Move to the line below marked and place the cursor after A. Start visual mode with V and move the cursor to just before started. And hopefully it will... Um, just before, uh, before first, so this is very difficult to see uh, type the Y command uh, to yank the highlighted text move the cursor to the end of the second line um, J so it says I can use J and then J oh does not take me to the end oh okay that's right because it it puts it after it puts it after the cursor use visual mode to select a item yank it with y move it to the end of the next line and put the text there with p this is the second item okay very nice uh this is the first item this is the second item you can also use yy as an operator yw yanks one word yy yanks the whole line and then p puts the line so for instance so yy put yy put and then i could i, I could do like four uh four yanks three yy and it has now added three so undo there we go this is the second come on now s second item excellent all right lesson 6.5 set option set an option so uh, search or substitute ignores case search for ignore by entering ignore enter repeat several times by pressing in set the ic ignore case option by entering set ic now search for ignore again by pressing in notice that ignore and uh, that lower um, 
capital I ignore and all caps ignore are now also found. Okay. Uh, set the highlight search and in INC search options set HLS IS. Okay. Uh, now type the search command again and see what happens. All right. So I'm going to try the first time. Uh, let's remember where we are just in case we have to get back here. That's line 816. So if I type in ignore and then in. So we're at the bottom. Ignore. Uh, repeat several times by pressing in. So you see I'm searching through. Okay. Now set the IC ignore case option. Set IC. And now we go, we search again. There we go, now we're searching. And you see our cursor is now, notice that it, that all forms of ignore are, are now also found, whether they're all, all caps or have little caps, um, have some caps, they're all being searched for now. Very nice. Now they say to set the HL search and INC search options. So HLS and IS. Notice that we can set multiple flags at the same time. Oh, did I do that right? Let's see. Set HLS and IS. Good. So now it's highlighted the search. Set uh, now type the search command again and see what happens. ignore to disable ignoring case set no IC okay so I'm just going to cycle through these ignore enter and you see my cursor is moving through the various options including lowercase capital doesn't matter it will check for them all to disable ignoring case enter set no IC so set no IC now it's only searching for lowercase versions of ignore. It's searching for the exact pattern and it has to be the exact case. All right, to remove the highlighting of matches, enter no HL search, okay? No HL search. There we go, that turns off highlighting. If you want to ignore case for uh, just one search command, use forward slash C. In the phrase forward slash ignore backslash C, so if you want to ignore the case for just one search command, so that, once again, fine-tuning, fine-tuning. All right, lesson six summary. Uh, we covered the two types of O. So uh, lowercase O opens a line below the cursor and starts insert mode. Capital O, a type capital O to open a line above the cursor and put you in insert mode. Uh, two, type A to insert text after the cursor. That's lowercase a. Type capital A to insert text after the end of the line. That was what we covered way back at the beginning of this tutorial. Three, the E command moves to the end of the word. Covered that. The Y operator yanks, copies text, and P puts or pastes it. Five, typing capital R enters replace mode until escape is pressed. We'll just continue to overwrite contents of the file. Typing set X sets the option, um, as you see we've covered here, and earlier in this in this tutorial I covered set ruler. Um, I can set number, like I could change that. Set, oh, see, so I can set no not sure how do you turn it off you can use either the long or the short option name prepend no to switch an option off okay so if i like for instance set no number now numbers are gone i want them back so set number very good uh prepend no to switch an option off good we sorry did that lesson seven uh seven point one getting help VIM or VIM has a comprehensive online help system to get started. Try one of these three. Press help uh, key if you have one. Uh, let's see here. A bit of a glare. Do I have a help key on this one? I do not. I do not. Uh, type the F1 key if you have one. I do. So let's see what happens. Look at that. 
opens up the help help option right there. Very nice. If I want to close that, there we go. Um, F1 key if you have one, or you can simply use colon help. And they will all open up the help version. This is for Vim version 8.2. Last change, 2021, December 27th. So you can flip through that and you see it opened up a previous version of, or it, it, it opened up another pane it, uh, within Vim. So now I have two that I can toggle back and forth. And you see right now I am currently in the help option, just going through, taking a look at various aspects. So basic editing, uh, general subjects, making Vim run, turning Vim, uh, tuning Vim, editing effectively, lots of good stuff there. I'm going to simply get out of there. And one way you can get out of there, I don't know if I mentioned it already, but shift ZZ, saves and quits. Okay. Uh, read the text in the help window to find out how the help works. Type W, uh, control W, control W to jump from one window to the other. Type colon Q, enter to close the help window. You can find help on just about any subject by giving an argument to the help command. Try these. Uh, so let's see here. Let's try that. Um, so if I want to, if I want to know what this character, the forward slash does, if I type that, it will immediately take, it takes me to that location in the help manual. Hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll uh, discover all the answers to my life's problems. I won't hold my breath. Okay. So that's, that, that's our help. That's our help option. Lesson 7.2, create a startup script, enable Vim features. Vim has many more features than just than VI, but most of them are disabled by default. To start using more features, you can create a dot or a VIMRC file. Start editing the VIMRC file. This depends on your system. Uh, now read the example VIMRC file contents. Okay. Uh, write the file with W the next time you start with Vim, it will use syntax highlighting. You can add all your preferred settings to this .vimrc file. For more information, type colon help vimrc uh, slash intro. So let's see what happens when I do that. So in a, another terminal, actually, I'll let you run that one because I'm going to show you my current so i can use my tilde so vim tilde forward slash dot vim rc and what that means is a current home directory and i'm going to look at my dot my dot file which normally doesn't show up in uh in searches so there we go so as you see these are my various commands that i have already set there we go yeah, that's enough space. So as you see, I have some of my Vim commands already set up the way I want them. And there are lots of different options that you can set each one depending on your particular uh, on your particular use case. Really get to know this part because this is where Vim really, uh, you can really take control of your editor, customize it, make it look the way you want, make it act the way that you want. So it's great to have control at this granular, granular level. So I'm just going to close this out, go back to my previous terminal. Okay. The next time you start Vim, it will use syntax highlighting. So I'm not going to worry about that right now, but uh, just know that you would be able to use, use the example Vim uh, VIMRC file. Okay. Lesson 7.3 completion. Command line completion with control D and tab. Make sure that Vim is not in compatible mode. Uh, okay. So if I do set no CP, set no CP. Good. Uh, type the, com the start of a command E. Press control D and Vim will show you a list of commands that start with E. Okay, so if I colon E and then control D, oh, control E and then I do control D, there we go, look at that. It's showing me all the commands 
that uh, start with the letter E. Very nice. Uh, type D tab and Vim will complete the following name to edit. So D tab. There we go. Now add a space and the start of an existing file name. So edit. Uh, let's see what files do we have. Do we have any we can use? Let's do ls. We have new file.txt. We'll use that one. Uh, edit new. Uh, we'll use new file. Now add a space. Uh, press tab. Vim will complete the name. Uh, notice I already did tab completion. If it is unique, completion works for many commands. Uh, just try pressing Control D and tab. It is especially useful for help. So if you're trying to look for various um, um, commands in the help manual, you can use tab completion. Okay, so for instance, if I did here, uh, no write since last time, add override. Okay, so I need to save this file first, and now I can edit new file. Very nice. And let's go back to Vim Tutor. And you see it takes me, so I'm going to have to set my ruler and set numbers again. Set ruler. And uh, I can set number as well. Very nice. So what line number was that? Something like, well, actually, I can search for this chapter. Was it chapter 7? Nope. Um, lesson. Lesson, that's it. So let's search for this pattern. Lesson 7. There we go. So now it took me to Lesson 7. And moving through. So we've enabled the Vim features. 7.3. We've done completion and summary. Excellent. So look at that. We finished this. We finished the Vim Tutor. Hooray, hooray for us. Uh, uh, let's see here. Type help or press F1 or help to open a help window. We did that. Type help. These are all our summaries of lesson seven. Control W, Control W to jump to another window. Type colon Q to close the help window. Create a VIMRC startup file to see your preferred settings. And then type a colon command. Press Control D to see possible completions. Press tab to see one to use one completion. Okay, so let's see. Let's see, for instance, if I uh, do colon and then I want to see what commands start with U, and then I do control D. Unabbreviate, undo, undo join, undo list, unhide, unlet, unlock var, unmap, unmenu, unsilent, update. Whew. And then you would just tab, and you can tab through, as you see, it's just simply going through each of the various versions. So I just got rid of that. All right. This concludes the Vim Tutor. It was intended to give a brief overview, uh, overview of the Vim Editor just enough to allow you to use the editor fairly easily. It is far from complete as Vim has many more commands. Read the user manual next. Help user manual. For further reading and studying, this book is recommended. Uh, Vim VI Improved by Steve Ola, Olin. I guess that's how you say it. Pardon me if I butchered your name. Publisher New Writers, the first book completely dedicated to Vim, especially useful for beginners. There are some here are some examples and pictures. This book is older and more about VI than Vim, but also recommended learning the VI editor by Linda Lamb. That has been updated um, and it actually it's quite good. It starts right with Vim now. Um, sixth edition also includes information on Vim. Very good book to have. Uh, this tutorial was written by Michael C. Pierce and Robert K. Ware, Colorado School of Mines, using ideas supplied by Charles Smith, Colorado State University. You can email them if you want. Modified for Vim by Bram Moulinar, the great father of Vim. We thank you for your efforts. With this, look at that. So we did 50 minutes and 46 seconds, so that means it took us an hour and 30 minutes, or a little less than an hour and 30 minutes, to complete this Vim Tutor. Congratulations if you stuck it out to the end. You now know that much about Vim, but that's as much as you need to get started. So thank you so much for your time. Um, now go forth and use the only editor that is worthy. 
just kidding use whatever editor you want actually uh um you can use editors such as uh visual studio code uh, um, a text editor and you can actually map vim key bindings um, so that it allows you to use a lot of the same commands that are in vim so if you like visual studio code and you want to just augment you want to be able to use the home base keys and get really fast and use all the commands just look into that um, Beyond that, there's really nothing else to say. Uh, um, it's, been a, it's been a pleasure going through this tutorial with you again. And take care. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.